and welcome to part four, the final installment of this particular bonus video. Um, you can see I'm cutting out his uh, his body there, uh, and this one came out a little too short actually, so I had to create another one and put it on top of it, which is why he has so, such weird. Uh, and I shouldn't point this out, because it'll just make you notice it every time now. But he's got kind of weird seams on his chest and neck, and that's why it was kind of a mess up. I've got a much better idea of how to uh, accomplish it now. So, I won't be making that mistake again in the future. So this is quite sped up, uh, because again, it's it's mostly just sewing and and sewing and sewing and sewing. You got I had to be careful with his eyes there. Uh, they kept rubbing against the desk. He's got a few uh, a few marks on him now from when they've hit walls or or uh, bumped against the floor or something over the past year. You can't really notice them because that kind of mark usually comes out white, and that's not as noticeable against the yellow. So it's not terrible, but I definitely wish there was an easier way to keep him protected. I just have to be a little more careful when I'm carrying him around. So this part, the part where I'm sewing up the jaw to the head there on the neck, um, that is why his mouth movement is as rigid as it is. It would be a lot, he'd have a much wider range of movement if not for that particular seam. And again, I I have an idea on how to how to correct that in future builds. So hopefully, in later later versions, he'll be a lot uh, a lot more animated. Me. His voice took me a while. Um, I actually sat down. Maybe I'll maybe I'll show you guys that video at some point or another. Sat down in front of the camera and uh, did a few different voices. I. I didn't do that many voices. I pretty much went straight to the to the uh, voice that I currently do for him. So I currently like I'm never going to change it. No, I I went straight to his official voice. But there are one or two variations. It's a little, kind of kind of funny to watch. Anyway, you can see I went through quite a few changes of clothing in this video alone, that's, like I said, it took me so many, so many days to get this done, and uh, hopefully later attempts will be a little more streamlined. I'm going to skip showing you how I made the arms and the legs, because really they're just tubes of fabric. If you don't know how to sew a tube, again, you're you're getting way ahead of yourself. Um, they're tubes of fabric. They have uh, spaces in between where I where I put the put the stuffing f to uh, be his arms and legs, and and that's about it. I'm also gonna gonna kind of skip the feet. You'll see the you'll see uh, a little bit of it, but you're not gonna see my sewing it together just because I think I I forgot to videotape that and I just don't have it. So. And that's kind of a mandatory skip. Anyway, this is the wire I use to pose his hands. It's a fairly lightweight wire. It takes takes a little bit. Takes uh, two layers of each uh, in each finger. So you get uh, one loop and then another loop in each finger. And that's how he can hold things as long as they're light enough, or how he can grip things when I need to make him hold something else. His uh, his dexterity isn't what I'd like it to be, but then again, you know, he's a puppet, so no too I'm not too concerned about that. Um, there's no real good way to, to sew one of those inside his hand, so it just kinda has to go in like a hand in a glove. I think I've come up with a better idea for that, so maybe at one point I'll I'll try that. Uh, Clyde pretty much has the same setup except with, you know, three fingers going on. In case you're wondering, I didn't I didn't get a uh, 
get any video of, of, how, of how I made the arm wires either, his arm rods. Those are just uh, just barbecue skewers that I found at, uh, well, I'm not going to say the name of the store because I'm biased against it, but it's the only store I could find them at, unfortunately. But they're the only ones I could find the black ones, black and long. That was that was the uh, the selling point. I, I had some at a store that I prefer to go to, but they were they were silver, uh, you know, your your regular metal color. And I didn't really think to uh, buy any black spray paint at the time, and they were too short. So so I picked these other ones up, and they were like. Like ninety, like maybe a dollar, maybe a dollar ninety nine, a uh, package, and it came in. It came with four, so you're only paying like fifty cents per. Uh, so that's not too bad. So what I just did was I, on jump walks and on on Clyde. It, it's unfortunate on Clyde because his hands are so much bigger than his arms. Um, I hadn't come up with any idea to be able to make removable arm rods yet. So, Jump Walks just has uh, those bands around them, and it looks okay. It looked okay with this old camera, but with the newer camera, it's a little bit easier to tell. And I've come up with an idea again, but for now, we just kind of have to tolerate the uh, felt bands that slip on over the hands. So there I've got one arm done, and I'm doing the other hand. I, I kind of tried to speed this up a lot, a lot quicker than the first one. But building a hand is not easy. It takes, takes a little while, because, you know, there's no good way of, of sticking... Without just creating a mess of glue, there's no good way of sticking the wires to each other. You just kind of have to twist and hope for the best. See the wire cutters there in the background. Yeah, I just kind of wound up tying the wire together as best I could, and then slipping into the hand. Once once it's in the glove, it doesn't move around too much. It's it's a matter of finding it inside the glove and pushing the correct fingers into the correct finger holes. But, with a little perseverance and imagination, you got yourself a posable hand. One day he will learn how to flip people off. Doesn't really work with four fingers, but he will. So yeah, like I said, the arms and legs are just kind of tubes. His arms came out a little bit beefy for his hands. Um, I might change that a little bit, but I kind of like the fact that he has sort of smallish hands. I just realized I am wearing that exact same shirt. Of course, since I practically changed through my entire wardrobe in the over the course of this uh, four-part video, uh, that would be difficult not to do, I guess. Yeah, getting that sewed up, getting anything sewed up on the outside, you know, it, it's easy when you can sew something up and then turn it inside out, but once you have it done and you need, need to close it up, that's the hard part. And, uh, I happened, happened to choose his wrist on that one. The shoulder would have been better if I had uh, made his hand and arm one piece, which I think I'll do next time, uh, because the shoulder is under clothes most of the time. And the wrist is is a part of the puppet that you look at more often. It doesn't look terrible, but seamless is usually better. His uh, his clothes are, uh, in case you're wondering or you just didn't figure it out, are just like clothes for your average seven year old. He's about he. I've mentioned it before in some of the vlogs. He is about the size of a of a of a kid. Um. If I stand him up next to me, he comes up to about my waist. Maybe a little bit taller even, so... I just found some uh, cle clearance clothes at, uh... Actually, at the store I work at. And, um... Had, had one of my co-workers kind of help me 
dig through that. One of my co-workers and subscribers, by the way, kind of dig through the the clearance clothes with me. So that was that was a lot of fun and a lot of laughs ensued. All right, we're coming up to the end here. I'm um, just gonna finish up this arm and then I'll show you the uh, footprints I made in the in the felt. There they are, and you notice um, that the top footprint has grooves in the toes and the heel, and it's a little bit bigger than the bottom. The bottom is the bottom of the foot, the top is the top of the foot. That creates a flat, a round top and a flat bottom. Anyway, forgive the lighting, I hope you enjoyed watching me create jumwalks here, and uh, thanks for watching. Here's to another 20.